What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to another epic video, commercial versus film grading, Sicario. And the reason why I'm calling it Sicario is because for the film section of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Sicario as a reference. We're not going to go for a one-to-one -one match, but just check out some of these shots with the scopes to get an idea for how different film grading is from commercial. And that's why this series is so exciting to me. It's been a while since I put out a video in here. It's going to be jam packed with tons of brand new techniques because that's the point of every video that I put out. I want to make it different. I want to make it entertaining, but bring something new to the table. And also you'll see a link to other episodes from this series up top. So check them out when you get a chance. Shout out to my brother Christoph for providing this epic footage. He is a legendary cinematographer. Here is his IG handle. Go show him some love. So guys, if you want a 10 to 1 advantage over your competitors, then check out 10 tips to grade 10 times faster for DaVinci Resolve. It's a free webinar. Link is in the description. You do not want to miss out. If you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, really break that button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Follow me on Instagram. You know I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro. All right, so here's the clip that we're working with. It is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just check it out. I'm gonna play it through in loop. Just watch this. And for me, this is a perfect hero frame. And let me tell you why. We get to have the skin, we see her eyes, we have black points for our anchors, we have our wood, so we can really latch on to what the wood should look like. We have outdoors, our highlights, we have to keep everything in control. This is a perfect hero frame. Uh, so once everything looks good here, when we play it through, everything should look good everywhere. Okay, so that's the point of a hero frame. So I'm going to park it right here. First, we're going to start off with a commercial look. Then we're going to move on to our film look. Our film look is going to be built off of the commercial look DNA. Okay, so let's go ahead, create a new node. And uh, here, let's just go ahead and give it a name. So this is going to be our Rec. 709 LUT. We're going to be using a technical LUT which is basically right here, go under your LUTs. And this is the RE LUT. It comes with DaVinci Resolve. So this is their LUT conversion that is provided by the manufacturer. So RE wants you to drop that LUT to do a color transform. So everything looks kosher from log to rec 709. So this is what we're going to start off with. And when you drop on the LUT, you might as well just go, dude, let's print it. This is good enough. And in most cases, that's what happens when we talk about movies. They're shot so well and they're lit properly, just like how Christoph lit this set that, you know, you can just drop on a LUT, make a few tweaks and print it. And uh, Christopher Nolan is known for doing this, like where in his movies, all he allows his colorist to do is printer lights, you know, just like balance some things out. But that's about it. Vignettes, everything is created on set with lighting. So I want to always take things a step further and, you know, show you something that you might have missed as a colorist. What I'm going to do here in my first node, let's go back here. Let's call it primaries. OK, so this is going to be our primaries, PRI. Let's just leave it there. And what I want to do here is balance out the image a little bit, because to me, this is a little bit more on the warm side, even her skin tones. Because she is Caucasian, her skin should be more on the pink side than ne not necessarily like, you know, where a Middle Easterner's skin would be, right? Like in that olive world. So let's get it out. And one way to do that would be I'm going to start off with my, you know, color temp and tint. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull my temp back and obviously all this exaggerate and then kind of pop it back in. So let's just bring it back somewhere around here. Then I'm going to take my tint and I'm going to start adding magenta, obviously go too far, then come back. And where does it look fine? And uh, to me, somewhere around here is looking good. And now I'm going to go back to my temp, cool it off, bring it back. This is looking good. And now if I do before and after, we made a huge difference. OK, so that is a huge difference. Now, the outdoor is looking really cool now compared to before, like right here. So obviously, this is where we're going to jump into our lift gamma gain and balance it out. So let's start off with my gain and I'm going to try to get rid of all that cool tones coming through the window. So like, let's just balance it out a little bit. So even something like that. And now let's go into our gamma and counter that so we can 
bring it back to where we like it. Somewhere around here where our skin tones. So look at the difference, right, that we're making. We thought that, you know, after the LUT, it was perfect. But look at the difference we made after dropping the LUT. And just with certain primary adjustments. Like we didn't do much, but we made such a massive difference. And color grading is all about little nuance, right? Like a little thing here and a little thing there goes a long way. So this is already looking really good. I'm going to take my lift and just try to get some of that blue out and see if it works. But if it doesn't, then I'm just going to leave it where it is. So maybe pull it up somewhere around here. Because again, just keep in mind, we're going for a commercial look. So it's going to be quote unquote, a little bit of a natural look uh, more than anything else. At this point, it's looking pretty neutral to me. I'm pretty happy. I'm going to create a new node. This one I'm going to call vignette. And what we are going to do is just create a simple vignette. And I'm going to raise it a little bit, move it over around her face. And then aspect, I want it to go this way. So it emulates the light. And then I'm going to tilt it around again, like, you know, because the light overhead light is up here somewhere. It's coming through. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it. I'm going to go in my primaries. I'm going to grab my curves around 40 ish mark. And then I'm going to bring it down. And now I'm just looking at here. So like, where do I get the most juice? So even somewhere around here, it starts to look like these colors have like a lot of saturation now. So they're looking pretty good. So if I do before and after huge difference, right now, I'm going to go ahead and create an outside node. And in the outside node, pretty much I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to grab my curve right around 60 ish mark and then like raise it, but not too much because I don't want to blow out her skin. Right. So somewhere where it just looks proper and it's not too much. So this is barely doing anything. So let's just exaggerate it a little bit. So even something like that before and after big difference. I'm happy with that. So now if I were to take these two and do a before and after, you can see the difference, right? How big of a difference it made. So let's go back to this node. Let's go back to tracking and let's track it back. Okay. Now come back here. Let's track it forward. Okay. So now we have a perfect track, right? Everything is locked on. So let's go back to our hero frame somewhere around here. And so far, so good, right? It's looking pretty good. I mean, I'm going to go as far as, I mean, this is really close to being, you know, this is our grade. This is, let's just call it, right? But let's just do a few more things. So this was for inside. So let's call it inside, basically inside the vignette. And here we're just going to use our log wheels. So basically this is what's going to happen. Okay. I'm going to go back into my log wheels right here. And what I want to do is right now, my focus is right here. Okay. So in this area, so I want to neutralize it a little bit more because if you look at my scope right here, there's still a lot of blue, which would be okay because during the day, the light outside is usually blue, but I want to just make it a bit more neutral. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to try to bring in way more juice in her skin, which is going to happen using our midtones. OK, so I'm going to try to do that. Those are the two things that I really want to do. And let's see what happens. OK, so let's start with our highlights and I'm going to do what I said uh, that I'm going to focus on. So right now I'm just going and I'm really focusing on the outside. But see it's also affecting her face too right so if i were to zoom in and keep it somewhere around here and if i do before and after you see that it's bringing in that red that we're adding back there into her skin too and i personally think that it helps because look at it before a little bit more on the yellow side which is normal because the light will reflect you know off of your face so it should be fine it should be normal so let's split the difference, right? So let's just kind of go back. And even if I keep it somewhere around here, I like what it's doing to the skin. But the big thing is going to happen in my midtones now. So keep an eye on the skin. And I'm going to start moving this around, right? And just look at how much of that skin that we wanted to get, you know, and just having that perfect Caucasian skin how much of that difference we made just by using our midtone and highlight. And once again, guys, I'm going to punch in so you guys can really see. So before and after, and there was nothing wrong with it before, but like, look at what's happening after. So if I were to grab my log and my primaries, these two, 
which were outside of the Rec 7 or 9 changes that we made. Let's not even worry about the vignette. And if I do before and after, like this is where we were before, this is where we are after. And even if I pull back and I do before and after, I mean, just look at the difference, right? So this looked good. I mean, look at that. This looks like the color separation is out of control, right? And this is the nuance that I want to really focus on and teach on my color grading channel because I feel like this is what sets you apart. That's what turns you into a storyteller than, you know, just, oh, I can take my RE log footage and turn it into Rec. 709. Anybody can do that. So for the commercial look, I'm not going to go past that. This is good, okay? I've already have deep divers where we really go in and we drop in grain and we do 10,000 other things, you know. In this one, let's just keep it here and let's just create a version. So now we created that version. Now what I want to do is this. I'm going to bring up image from Sicario. Look at where it sits. This is, Now we're jumping right into our film look, okay? And please just focus on what's happening in the scopes. I mean, just look at this, where everything is sitting. And this is what I want you to understand. So if I go back to my image, which was a commercial look, see how we're kind of maxing out. We're keeping our highlights where they're supposed to be. We're keeping our skin and everything in this zone, like right here, where it has the most juice. But if you were to look at what's happening in Sicario, I mean, just look at it. I mean, the skin is sitting right here, whereas my skin was sitting right here. And that is the difference between a cinematic or a film look compared to commercials, okay? So now that we have that in mind, when we're going to be creating that, it's not going to be that difficult because I'm going to be working based off of what I already created. So let's create a new node and we can call this the film look. You know, and in here... What I'm really going to do is I'm going to go in this mode, split screen mode. So then I have this image next to it. Um, you know what? Even better than that. Let's just do this and let's control it. So let's put this image somewhere around here. I'm going to go under my sizing and I'm going to move this over so we can have it right here. We can even flip it so we can have it like this. And now we can really focus on I'm going to keep her here because she is closer to our girl. So now what do we have to do? So first thing that we have to do is I'm going to take my gain. I'm going to go in my gain and uh, I'm really just going to pull it down. Okay, so I'm looking at my scopes right now. I'm looking at her right now. All the things are happening at once. Okay, so I'm bringing this down. And uh, where does my girl needs to live? So somewhere around here. Okay. Now, my highlights are still kind of punchy, which is totally fine. So you might be looking at it and going, dude, what did you do? You created a beautiful image and you just turned it into like whatever. But even look at the highlights right here to my highlights right here, how close we are. And guys, this is the juice. You need to understand that that's what's important when you're creating these looks. Now, let's do a little bit of an extracurricular and try to get it into that Sicario world. So for that, let's just start with temp and tint and see what we can do. So this time I'm going to start injecting some green and that is already kind of getting me close to that. And then let's start adding some warmth, not too much, and then put more green in there, something like that. And now I'm going to go under my saturation, pull it back, not too much, pull it back somewhere around here. And if I keep it somewhere there, if I look at it, it's not that far. Again, I'm not going for a one-to-one. -one. I'm just going for, you know, uh, something close to what they have going on. Now, one thing that I will do, I will go in my log wheels. I will take my black points. I will bring it down because when I see my black points here and even like down here, my black points are a little bit lifted. So they need to come down. I'm looking at this to that. I need to bring that down a little bit. Okay. So in my log wheels, I'm going to take my shadows and I'm going to pull it down. Okay. Okay. And now we're really bringing it there, but now it's affecting too much. So I'm going to go in my low range and I'm going to grab everything else. So we don't affect everything. We only affect the jacket. So something like that. And again, guys, like I said, I'm not going for a one-to-one -one match. I'm just trying to get some of these things in the ballpark. And on that note, I feel like I can go back into my primaries and uh, in my temp and tint bring some of the magenta back to be honest with you and i mean to me you know if i do this right so let's just uh go back into my sizing 
and let's uh, kill this. So this goes back here. So if I do this to that, like if I do a wipe, like look how close this is compared to what we had before. If we go here and then do before and after. So sometimes you got to learn to make things easier on yourself. So we created that film look after we had our commercial look created. We didn't have to reinvent the wheel. We did not have to reinvent the wheel at all. We just got the essence down. Now, once again, we weren't going for a one-to-one -one match. So you got to keep that in mind. I still wanted to have my own look, but I wanted to keep it in a similar world, okay? So some people might be saying, dude, your highlights are still really high compared to where their highlights are. Well, they don't have a window, you know? So they don't have a window. Then how did I determine where my highlights should be? This is how I determined, okay? I went right here. I, I grabbed this to that. So where this light was, I wanted to keep the intensity of this light to that light. So when I found that anchor, I was pretty close. Now, obviously, the colors on these two are different. So again, I'm not going for one-to-one -one match. I'm going to leave it as is because that cool tones are coming from here. So I do have those. And then I also have warm tones. So I want to keep all of that in because different color temperature lighting is what makes it interesting, right? I'm going to keep it right there. And now if I get rid of it, this was our film look. So guys, color grading is all about the nuance and understanding what a film look actually is. Because if I were to put these two next to each other, you're going to go, dude, you had an amazing image compared to what the base was. Why would you ever make it look like this? But, you know, if you look at this, then you will understand why I did what I did. So let's do this. Let's uh, go to this one. And I'm going to kill everything and we're going to do a look breakdown for our commercial look. And then we're going to do the same for our film look. So we started off with the Rec. 709 RE LED provided by RE. And then we went and did our primary. So you just balance out the image. And then I did a vignette. And it just like put so much emphasis on our hero. Then I did an insight and just brought her out a little bit, an outside node. And then I used my log wheels and I showed you how powerful they are without even using a qualifier. You can pull out so much. And now let's jump into our film look. Once again, let's kill everything. And uh, I guess we don't even have to kill these. So let's just keep these available. And then in the film look, I just went in and used my gain and then temp and tint to like really get that look that I was going for. And that's about it. That's all I did here to get the film look. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Hopefully you guys picked up tons of tips and tricks from this tutorial. If you have any suggestions for future content that I should be putting out on this channel, drop a comment below. Do not forget to watch the free training. Link is in the description. You will literally hit the ground running with DaVinci Resolve. On that note, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you guys in the next video.